Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. This is not a tutorial. This is, I'm not an expert, but I can tell you probably I'm an expert at watching YouTube videos on how to set up a three axis brushless gimbal. Um, what I've got in front of you, uh, in front of you or front of me is the Pilot Flight H1 Plus 32 bit dual IMU. Um, it's, I believe I've got it pretty much perfectly balanced. Um, as you can see here, you can just put them out, turn it any different way. Uh, balancing it on this is, uh, really great. This is not a review, by the way. Um, my review will come later. Basically, in my review, I, I've got to understand how to balance this and tune this correctly to this particular camera and lens combination, A7S 35mm. So let me show you some footage of when I first got the H1 Plus with the stock settings that they sent to me. Um, and you can see as I'm walking, and I think walking is a great kind of acid test because you can do a lot of other things like holding it steady or doing certain moves like craning up or craning down or going around an object sometimes those are actually easier just walking with it and with a pretty wide lens can cause you can see a lot of jitter in the corners you can see what's going on in the roll axis and the pitch and you can see the stepping motion and to me one of the best things about these kind of stabilizers is you can move from point A to point B smoothly um, without having to master using a glide cam. I also want to talk about, um, here I'll show you some footage of the GH4. The GH4 looks actually better because that has image stabilization on the lens. Whereas this camera, the A7S with 35mm, and I also had the 28mm on there, what I want to do is get this as good as I can get it before I have any sort of image stabilization like on the GH4. Um, kind of showing me falsified results, I guess you could say. We're using uh, the version 2.43 B9 on a simple GBC, B, BGC, yeah, GUI. Uh, so it offers one interesting thing, and that's called, under the basic tab, there's a auto-tune for the PID settings. I've tried it many times. Um, usually the numbers are crazy high, and once you got it, um, it just vibrates and oscillates and it just doesn't work very well, in my experience anyway. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. So basically what I do on the outcome of this video is I wanna have you guys maybe provide comments like, yeah, I had the same issue with that particular thing. Why don't you try X, bringing up the D or lowering the P or changing the I or going to the follow page and changing the dead band. That's kind of the discussion I'm kind of hoping and maybe we could all benefit from this. All right, here are the settings that I got from Pilotfly. They've been working with me back and forth. Um, so I've got, these are the, the roll settings, pitch, yaw, power settings. Now I had to back down the pitch settings from power because it was too much because when I'd pick it up and I would go down, um, you'd get some major oscillations or vibrations on the power. And I usually had to do more with the dampening than anything else. I had lower dampening from like 40. I think they suggested like 35 on the pitch and like 135 on the power. So I brought all those down. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna zero these all out. So what I do now is bring the power down to like 135 here. I'm actually gonna bring this down to like 90 because the pitch needs doesn't need much power at all. And I can just tell from experience that that's about where it wants to be. Um, yaw is a different story. I'm gonna put this probably at one, let's say 145. It doesn't need to be too crazy high. And then these overshoot numbers of when it loses step, these really don't need to be all that high either. So um, I'll just leave them where they're at. Number of poles, that is given what the manufacturer, I ran an auto so I know these, auto, these inverts are correct. Um, down here, the minus Z and minus Y, that came from the manufacturer. Um, so let's go to next to the advanced tab. I'll show you what we got here. And basically the only thing that really I think of any consequence from other YouTube videos I've seen, but it's set to high and silent. Um, and we're gonna come back to this one here in a bit. Let's go to RC. Now RC is for remote control, I believe. And right now um, you can see I've got this analog number one, our ADC-1 set to pitch. And unfortunately this joystick only does one thing, so it doesn't go all directions. So I can change this. And I, I change the speed, it used to be at like 40, which is way too fast. Um, and, and I changed it to uh, six, so it's nice and slow. So you can get a nice, if you want to just do a, a, a tilt up and down, you can. So that's pretty much it for RC. All I did was lower the speed and I kept the uh, low pass filter, I believe that is what that's called. All right, next we're gonna go to follow and I'm gonna disable this 
and I'm going to disable the yaw. And in terms of dead band, I'm going to keep these where they're at. Speed, we're going to come back to these because these, these I think are really important numbers. Um, and I'm probably going to change those from where they are now. And then service, just to show you um, the way it's set up from the factory, I think these are kind of conservative. Um, the alarm goes off at 10 volts. I think that's a little bit too early. Could probably bring that to down to 9 volts. Um, and the motors actually stop at 9.9. .9. I think, again, I think that is way too conservative. I think you could go a lot longer. Um, and this one I don't understand, the compensate voltage. And then when I click it, none of that, there's no help menu, so I don't even know exactly what this does. All right, coming back to advanced, um, what I'm going to do first is actually not the pitch. I'm going to do the um, roll first. Uh, so I'm going to disable this and disable this. And I'm going to go back to service, or sorry, basic. Uh, we're going to start playing with these numbers. Now, what I'm going to do this time is, I, like I've filed so many YouTube videos and very frustrated about the results I've gotten. So I'm actually goes with the base cam electronics, the owner's manual for what this actually, who actually designed it. Unfortunately, I've never seen any base cam electronic videos of how to set this up. But I'm just going to step through the instructions on how they do it. Unfortunately, in the manual, they don't really explain. They say, hey, refer up here on how to set your power levels. They never explained how to, again, I know these are good numbers to start with uh, for 14 pole motors. I know if you're carrying like a 5D Mark III, you're going to probably be in the 150 to the 200s in terms of voltage, the full voltage going to the motor. But for us, um, we're only using about half the voltage going to the motors, and it'll last a lot longer in terms of your battery life. Hopefully get at least two hours out of this, because this is not a battery that you can, a new one you can put into. You have to charge it up. All right, so what it says first is to set the I to 0.1. Okay, we're just gonna follow 0.01. Uh, D for uh, 10 and P for 10. So both these says bring these up to 10 and bring this up to 10. So I've got the roll motor going and I say right. So now just to see the pitch motor is not doing anything, but the roll motor, I can definitely feel it. So one of the things we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna tilt this 45 degree angle and you can see it's coming up very slowly. I mean, really, really slowly, because that's that 0 0.01 going on. And it's just gonna take forever. So that's way too long to recover from here. As you can see, it's going around. So in the manual it says, um, the gimbal should be stable at this moment. If not, increase the P and the D a bit. Um, I would say it's pretty stable, but as you can see, it's staying put. Again, the instructions just say, if it's stable, what do you mean by stable? Um, that's where I think if base cam actually had a video, you could demonstrate and say, this is what stable looks like. I don't know what stable looks like. Well, it's just a word. So then it says gradually increase P until the motor starts to oscillate. All right. So we're going to gradually, and I, we're not going to go too gradual here because I know from experience, we're going to skip, go right up to 40 here and we'll write it. And uh, yeah, there's no, there's no oscillation. I can't feel anything. Um, so we're going to, we're going to crank this. Oop. I'm going to go up. Let's crank this to like. We're going to go way past. And then you can see it's oscillating. So we've gone way too far. So we're at 40. Let's split the difference. Let's go to like 65. And as you can see, still not stable. So this is good. So we know let's go to 50. Still not stable. Let's uh, bring it down back down to 40. Maybe it's the highest we can go. No. Can't feel anything. If we go to the monitoring tab, maybe we can uh, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that should be it. So we're still too high, so let's go back. And we're gonna bring this down to 35. And is it stable? Yeah, I call it stable. So let's move on. All right, now what it says to do is start increasing D. Um, increasing D, here we go. 
Let's bring it up to 40, because we don't want to spend forever doing this. And as you can see, there's no oscillations, no nothing. You can see it's dampening it. The D part is what dampens it. D is actually a derivative, I believe, calculus term. And everything seems to be pretty good. So let's go crazy. Let's like do what we did before. Let's go up to 100, close to 100. And we should go, at this point, you would think it would go crazy, but it doesn't. So we know we can get a lot of D out of here. Let's go up to where it does go crazy. What would that be, 130? I'm not seeing any, no vibration. So the roll motor can stand a ton of D, where I know the pitch can't, it just can't. Now I can feel it, I can actually feel the vibration. So if we go to the monitoring, I know you guys can't see it, but if I increase this, you can see those vibrations. So what we're going to do is 160 is way too much. Let's go to 130. Close enough. Go back to monitoring. Uh, yes, I would say it's still there. Yeah, I can kind of feel it very faintly. So uh, probably what I'm going to say here is 100 is probably, is probably where you're pushing it too much. I can't feel it. Um, sorry, back to, to monitoring. And yeah, it's pretty much a straight line at this point. So, so that's about as far as we can go. Okay, in the next step in the manual, it says increase I until the low frequency oscillation start. Decrease I to keep it um, stable. Now you found the max PID settings for that particular axis. So let's go ahead and start increasing. So we've maxed everything out. So what we're gonna do here is just go crazy. Let's go to three and right and it should recover really fast. 45 degree angle, and let's count. 45, 1,001, 1,002, that was really quick. 1,001, 1,002. Um, I am not feeling any of vibrations, and, but here's the thing. Ken Asano, the guy that I think is amazing at this, I've watched his videos. What he does, he doesn't actually say what he's doing, because it's in Japanese or he doesn't actually speak um, in his videos but he usually goes for about a three second return time so let's go for that I've lowered it 1001, 1002, 1003 1001, 1002, 1003 so the I is it basically in the instructions it said to go as high as you could go before it oscillated but to me I think Ken Asano is right. Um, I don't think we need to push it that high. Maybe we'll try it later if we're not getting f um, fast enough response time when uh, we're dealing with that later. All right, so now it says repeat these steps for the next axis. So we'll go back to what advanced and I'm gonna take the roll out to disable and we're gonna do the pitch next. So we'll say pitch out and we'll say right and we'll go to service. I'm um, sorry, not service, but basic. And then what I do is um, increase this to 10, this to 0.01, and this to 10. And we'll say right. So same thing here, if I wrote this to 45 degree angle, you could see it's coming up, but it's coming up really slowly. So that has to do with the I value. First thing it says do is increase the P. And I just know from experience, we're gonna be somewhere around 40. So I'm gonna start at 40 first and right. And there's no vibrations. Everything feels pretty stable. So let's, let's go nuts. Let's go up to, cause that's what it says, go up until it starts to vibrate. Let's go to, I don't know, 80. This one I know will start to go crazy. And sure enough, yep, it's going crazy. So let's back it down, let's cut it in half, let's go to 60. So we're at 59, close enough. Uh, let's hold it. Yeah, lots of vibrations. I know it can't go much higher than 40, so we're gonna go, let's go to 40. Yeah, seems nice and stable. Let's push it, let's go to 45. See if we can. It doesn't, it feels, 
No, it's still vibrating. Bring it down. Let's go to like 36. I can't get it to start oscillating. Yeah, so I'd say about 36 as far as we wanna go. So the next thing it says, bring up D. So let's increase our D. Let's go crazy. Um, let's really bring it up. Let's go to 100. There's our high frequency vibrations as you can probably hear. Let's bring this down to 80. Uh, no vibrations, right? Yep. Nope, oh, there's our vibrations. So can't handle it when we go backwards. This is the thing I was noticing before. I just know from experience, I'm not gonna be able to get this very high because, yeah, right in here, it just can't handle. A lot of times I do want to go up like that. So I, I'm not about tuning it in positions that it can't even do. So let's go down to 30. 30 is about right. I have a feeling I'll have to lower it from there when other axes come into play. Um, so we're going to leave it at 30. So let's increase the eye. Let's go crazy. Let's go up to 0.3. No oscillations. You can see it's very fast to return. 45 degree angle, 1,001, 1,002. To me, that's too fast. Um, again, Kenasano is more of a two sec three second guy. Again, he's probably laughing right now. He's like, Dave, what are you talking about? I didn't say anything in the actual video, but you watch what I was doing and it wasn't actually right or something. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. So that's about right. So we're going to leave it at like 0 0.18. Uh, take the pitch out, disable it, and we'll enable the yaw out. So only the yaw motor is going. Just a quick way for me to... Um, do that without adjusting the power on the basic settings. I don't know why it does that on the second part. So power-wise, we're at 145. Um, again, we're going to start off at 10. We'll start off at 0.1, like it says in the manual. 10, you say right. Um, so the yaw motor. No oscillations. Everything feels good, which I knew it would. Because I've done this like 20 gazillion times. Like I've put many hours into this. So we bring up the D until it goes crazy. I don't know. Let's go up to 100. Yeah, and I can feel it. It's like all over the place. Yeah, as you could probably see. So let's bring that down, cut it in half. I don't know. Is that what you do in software? You, you go and then you cut it in half so you can find where you're supposed to be quicker. Yeah, it's still freaking out. So 49 is too high. Let's bring it down to 35. All right, that's not half, but it's still freaking out. Interesting. Yeah, there's some really low frequency oscillation. I don't know if you can see my hand, but it's uh, bouncing back and forth. Still really low frequency vibrations. Let's bring this down to 20. Right? All right, it's a lot more, it's a lot calmer now. No vibrations. Let's push it to 28, 29. I know we're right at 30, but feels fine. No low frequency. Oh, starting back up again. Let's bring that down. Cut it in half, 25. It's still there. I mean, just barely. Take two out. It's, you know what I'm gonna do here? Is I can actually bring the power down. I think 145 is way too much. Let's go to 130. That should solve it. No. So that's about right. All right, now it says bring up D. Let's bring, uh, let's go crazy. Let's go up to uh, 
76. Feels good. Let's go up higher. Let's go to 100. No, here comes the high frequency. I don't know if you can hear that. It's like, Ugh. so let's cut that in half. Let's go to, uh, I don't know, 70. No, nope, still oscillating. Let's go to 57. That's good. Let's see if we can get some more out of it. Let's go to like 62, three. Feels good. Again, I'm just dealing with the ah. Uh, don't worry that it's upside down. We'll get these axes going later. But that feels, feels good. All right, so now we've done all three axes. So now let's go back to um, advanced. And we're gonna enable rollout and pitch out. And let's straighten this up before it goes crazy when I hit right. Now, it could be a good, because next thing in the thing it says, then when all axes are tuned static, try to move the gimbal frame, emulating real work. You may notice some cross interference on axis. So we're gonna see if we can find any cross interferences. So again, I'm locked off. I don't have any follow modes. Um, yaw feels good. Roll feels good. Pitch, I knew that was coming because and there's sometimes I do want to bring this down low, low and then bring it up like that. And I don't want this oscillating. And I've had this before. So I'm going to go back to basic and I know it's dampening. So I'm going to go down to about 23. Still too much. Now this is where I bring down the power. We're going to bring down to 80. Still too much. Now I'm going to bring down this part of the power. Bring it down to like 25. Yep. Too much. Uh, bring down the power just a little bit, but I think it's more of the dampening, the D. Let's go to like 17. It's getting there. I'm gonna bring the power down again to like 70. Getting close. A little bit more here. Um, now we're gonna try bringing down the eye because um, I don't think it has anything to do with the eye. No. We're gonna bring the eye back up to where it was because I want that 0.3 or three seconds. Um, bring the dampening down just a little bit. We're just coming down. I think we're there. There's a little bit but not much. I'll never go this way, so I don't really care. You can hear the vibrations there. I'll never gonna go in front of the lens, so I don't really care about that. I do care about this mode. Um, it's fine going this way, and the yaw feels great. All right, so cross interference wise, I think we are there. All right, new day, new t-shirt. So what, I was looking back at the video from yesterday. One thing I didn't do was the yaw. So if I bring this out, uh, it's gonna take forever to come back. So let's reset that and let's bring this up. Like again, we go crazy. I don't know, three, close three. And bring it out. That was one, a thousand two, a thousand three. I'm gonna say that's gonna be way too fast for the yaw. It doesn't wanna move that fast. Um, really good question. I'm gonna say just based off experience, this is a tricky one. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. I'm gonna say it's about right. We're just gonna, I don't know, let's make it a nice even 0.5. That's it right. So now, um, Going back to what we did yesterday, it feels good here, here, although I can actually see the lens on the tilt motor. I don't know if you could see this, but it's actually doing this. And I think 
we're gonna see this a lot worse here when we go and we take everything back into the follow modes. So now the yaw follows and the lens follows. And sure enough, I can see some low frequency oscillation going on and I don't know why. Um, so let's go back to basic and let's see what we can find out here. I'm gonna guess uh, maybe power since we brought the power down so much. Um, again, we're gonna probably run into an issue later on, but maybe we can have two different modes. This is kind of what I'm thinking. Let's bring this back up to 100. And let's see if we still see that. Okay, you might not be able to see this, but I can still see it. I think it's better, not sure. Um, next thing I'd try to do is actually bring up the, um, let's make this a nice even 100. We'll bring up this power up to maybe 28. Um, that's right. Now the thing I don't know, now, all right, now it's much worse. So maybe it's not that, maybe it's not power. So I'm gonna bring the power back to 90, bring this down to, I don't know, maybe 23. And maybe what it is, see like it's totally lost step and it's now it's thinks that that's on the horizon. It might have to do with the eye. So now it's re kind of resetting itself. I'm gonna actually help it here with the uh, jo joystick. Now let's see what we got. Yeah, because I think what was going on before is the eye value was like going, whoa, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can, but what we need to do is even that out. So I'm gonna actually maybe bring that down to a three. So what I might do is set up two different profiles, one with fo no follow um, and then one with follow. And as you can see, that looks a lot smoother. Let's see if I can make it misstep if I don't have enough power. And misstep, it'll actually like point straight up or something like that. Now I can see a little bit more vibrations. I don't know if that's power. We're gonna try just a little bit more power. Let's bring this up to 30. Now it got worse. Man, it just does not want a lot of power on the pitch motor. I don't know, 24. Um, I want to say, just be conservative. Let's try the D now. D from 15 to 25. Let's see if that makes it worse. It doesn't make it worse. All right, let's see. Uh, if I can feel any oscillations now. Let's bring up the D some more. Now, again, so before what I wanted to do with, um, remember I wanted to go like this, but I can never do that now. Remember I was going over the top of the hot shoe and it go um, We'll never get that way in the follow mode, so we don't have to worry about that in this mode. So I'll probably have two different settings for a follow mode and a non-follow mode. Now that looks pretty good. Let's see if I can put my finger on it while I do it. Yeah, I'm not feeling any vibrations. I'm not seeing any. Let's see if we can bring the D up some more. Oop, let's go to 40. Yeah, yeah, I can start to, I, I almost heard it. It was a high frequency kind of oscillation. Let's try 35. I think we're ready to give this a shot. So before we head out into the, I'm gonna actually test this. One of the things I know is other YouTube people never did is they, yeah, this is how you tune it. And then you'd never see any other footage. So I'm definitely gonna show this. I'm gonna take it for a short walk. So, all right, so I'm not following the manual exactly, but one of the things I will do, and doesn't really even, I don't think it talks about it, is I'm gonna turn it off, make it sure it's nice and straight here. And you can see it's starting to go that way. Um, let's calibrate uh, by pressing the, if I go to service, you can see what I'm doing here. 
uh, if I pr long press, it cal calibrates the gyro. So I think all I have to do in the manual is anyway, just press and hold. And I think I don't touch anything. It just does it. Now, I'm at a little GoPro cage. This is working out really well, although this is, again, this is not part of my review, but I wish the uh, thumb screw on the bottom that mounts to the plate would fit flush. So when I put it down on the flat, even surface, um, that that would be uh, correct. So what I do is just kind of level up, level this out. And that is close enough. And then I'll pick this up. Actually, I'm going to do at this point, so we're going to disconnect this. Um, I'll power it down, disconnect from here, power it back up again. And then I'm going to bring it down to this sh shark cage made by, uh, who is this made by? And then I'll press one, two, three, four, five. And that should have calibrated the, well, I disconnected. I can't remember what it was, but I think it's the one of the other axes. So now I think we are ready to give this a test. All right, it's test number one. Here we go. I'm not expecting awesome things, but who knows? Here we go. Perhaps in a little bit, I'll bring out my other camera and you can see actually how I'm walking and how I'm holding it. And as I'm looking at the lens, it looks perfect. I mean, I'm not seeing any bobbling or anything, but I've always been fooled when I bring the footage back in and I can see a lot of bobbling. All right, this is test number two. I noticed there was a lot of jitter in that last one. I don't know if it was a roll axis the pitch axis or whatever. So I'm gonna start off with the roll axis first and I brought it down from member 0.2 and I brought it all the way down to 0.07. So it should not be um, trying to recover as quickly on the eye. So the eye from 0.2 to 0.07, here we go. and making one change at a time. All right, I didn't notice any difference, so I took the 0.07, brought it up to two on the roll, and now I'm gonna try the yaw. So if the yaw was at um, 0.05, I'm bringing it all the way down to 0.01 to see if that corrects that kind of jitter that I'm seeing. All right, here we go. I swear, when you look at it, it looks just rock solid. But you just can't see what's going on until you look at the image. You can't judge on a small screen on the back of the camera. There's just no way to do that. All right, bringing those levels down didn't seem to be helping, so I'm gonna go the opposite direction in a big way. Roll is 0.4, pitch is 0.4, and yaw is about as high as I could go is a 0.07. So these are really high responsive eye values, so we'll see what happens. Let's see if we're going in the right direction. Let's see if we can get rid of some of that jitter. I'm no Ken Asano. If you haven't watched his videos, you should definitely check them out because they're amazing what that guy can do with pistol grip devices like this while he runs. I can't even walk with this darn thing and get steady motion. How does he do it? It can be frustrating trying to do these gimbals. <laughs> all right, that darn jitter is still there. So I've returned all the eye values back to where they were. So now I'm starting to think it's the D the derivative, the dampening numbers. So I've taken all of them and I've just chopped them in half. 
I know I'm supposed to do just like one thing at a time, but I gotta just see if I'm going in the right direction first. So all of the D values across the board have been lowered in half. And let's see what happens. Sure feel like I'm walking pretty well. I've watched a video of Kenasana walking. I'm trying to imitate what he does like with his left arm and his knees bent and all that good stuff. I'm sure I'm still not as good as he is, but I think a lot of it has to do with tuning. All right, the jitter was still there, so I'm pretty sure it's not the power or the P. We've gone up and down on the I, we've gone up and down on the D. Actually, we can't go up any higher because those are the highest values we had. So now I've gone to the dead band where I had numbers of 40, 40, and 30. I've changed to 10, 10, and 10. So it should respond a lot slower in terms of the speed of what's going on in terms of the dead band. So let's go to try the dead band next because I don't, I think we've got the P and the I and the D set properly. So let's, here we go, dead band with 10, here we go. What a process this is. <laughs> Some would call it a pain in the butt, but if I can get this to work, uh, work well in a pistol grip format like this, what a game changer it would be for me, for my type of filming. It would be awesome. So that's why I'm putting in so much work to make this darn thing work. Plus being able to do the review well. All right, it actually looked like there was some improvement there, so I'm gonna keep them all at 10, and this time I'm gonna take the low pass filter, the LPF, and I think that's what it's called. Change them from two, one, and zero. Now I've changed them all to five, five, and five. Let's see what happens. So it should respond, it, does, it shouldn't respond at all if there's little tiny movements uh, within those few degrees of axis. I think that's what it does. Here we go. Looking to get rid of the jitter. Can Dave get rid of the jitter? That is the question. Or will I epically fail after all this work and not get anywhere? Which in this case, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I saw absolutely no improvement on that last one. So we've returned everything to two, one, zero um, on the bottom and then the exponential curve. I've changed from a, a expo curve, like I think it was five and 60 to a linear curve. So zero and zero, let's see if this does anything. I'm grasping at straws because after this, I'm running out of things I can try. What is it that's creating this jitter? Must be my walking. How does Ken Asano do it? All right, this could be my last and final test. Um, the Pilot Fly guys, which are really good, sent me an email. They uh, told me to upgrade to 2.55 B3. It's a beta version of the firmware, so I did that. And I loaded all the settings that they had sent me. Um, maybe I can show those to you. And here we go. If this fails, then I'm sending this whole video to Pilotfly and see what they recommend. Here we go. I'm holding my arm out as they recommended because I showed them some of my footage of me walking and they made a recommendation so if this doesn't work I'm gonna probably end the video right here and I guess this will be a 2B continued any suggestions you guys have <laughs> let me know there's probably some setting you guys would be saying, well, Dave, you forgot to check this box and it would have made everything stable. Please tell me if there's a box such as that. Because I think I've tried everything, but there's so many parameters and so many things that can influence other things, I could be totally wrong.
All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.